Welcome to Kingdom Promoters TV Network. You're watching the Kingdom Promoters Talk Show. I'm your host, Minister Fatike Samora. Today, um, I have a wonderful woman of God with me here in the studio that's going to share her testimony. A testimony that is going to blow your mind, and I know it's going to inspire someone to keep pushing until something happens. But before I introduce her today, I just want to take this time to thank all our viewers and um, on Facebook and Star TV in Sierra Leone. I want to thank those that are subscribed to our channel on YouTube, those that are liking our page on Facebook and also those are giving encouraging words and praying for us. I know that your prayers are going to be answered. Continue to keep us in your prayers and continue to be an encouragement to us because we need it. Thank you again for watching. I'm going to go on a quick break and when I come back, I'm going to introduce the woman of God that I have today with me in the studio. So stay tight, don't move and I'll be right back. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, um, you're watching the Kingdom Promoters Talk Show on Kingdom Promoters TV Network. Today, I have a woman of God with me, a mighty woman of God that God is using mightily for our generation. And she, she has a life-changing testimony. She's going to share a testimony today, what the Lord has done for her and what God is God is keep doing for her in her life and her ministry. With no further delay, please help me welcome Minister Teresa Laye to the show. Welcome, woman of God. Thank you so much, woman of God. It's a pleasure to have you here today, and I've been looking forward to this interview for God knows how long. <laughs> yes, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. No problem. Mm -hmm. Introduce yourself. Let me know, let people know who yeah. you are, where you're from, and you know who Teresa, Minister Teresa Lai is. Well, Minister Teresa Lai is just a child of God. I am married with two children, Amen. originally from Ghana, Amen. West Africa. And currently, I live in Arkansas uh, with my family. Amen. Yes. And um, you're from Ghana originally. Yes. I just want to go back, you know, your childhood. How was it like growing up? Has it always, have you always been in the ministry work or how was it like growing up in Ghana? Well, um, I, I spent part of my childhood in America mm -hmm. and part of it in Ghana. And um, the part that I spent in Ghana was very active. I started uh, ministry quite early. Oh, wow. I gave my life to Christ at the age of eight and um, sang my first solo at the age of eight, almost nine. Oh, wow. And so from there, I, I started ministering in song and in music, in, in and you music. never stopped. And basically, I never stopped. Oh my God! <laughs> yes. 
So um, mm-hmm. take me on a journey of age eight to maybe your teenage years when you went to college. Mm-hmm. And were you always like steadfast walking in that faith with God? Tell me the challenges that you faced as a child, yeah. you know, growing up in the Lord. Well, you know, my parents had, um, um, you know, invested in my spiritual life. Um, before I was born, my parents were having challenges in fertility. Um, so they had many, many miscarriages and basically gave up on having children mm. until God miraculously gave me, gave me to them. And uh, when they got me at the age of four months, I almost died. And uh, something happened, you know, a man of God uh, came on the scene, uh, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale of Blessed Memory, uh, who is the author of uh, Power of Positive Thinking, Mm -hmm. came into their lives at that time and came and ministered to me, prayed over me. Mm -hmm. And that was when they they told the Lord that if the Lord raised me up, that they would give me fully to his service. Mm -hmm. So my parents made that commitment to the Lord very early as a baby. I said this because, you know, um, they they went on to fulfill that promise to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so from the get-go, they started talking about Jesus. Oh, wow. You know, so that's why I was born again so early. So subsequently after that, they kept on feeding me the Word, putting me me in an an environment where I could grow in the Word, where I could grow in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I had that backing, solid backing of my parents. Um, However, growing as a teenager, going in between two cultures, um, my dad was studying in in the U.S. uh, at that time, in and out. And it was very challenging adjusting to Ghana after the U.S., Mm -hmm. especially when I was just entering into my teen years. Mm -hmm. Um, So I went into some kind of depression, you know. Mm -hmm. I had a battle with self-identity, who am I, you know. Um, You know, and those who come from abroad uh, to Ghana, I don't know how it is in Sierra Leone, (laughs) but uh, those in Ghana treat them like they are, you know, some very strange beings who don't know how to do anything, who don't know how to stand on their own. Um, So I felt rejected. I felt very strange, very uh, not part of the crowd. And that that really affected me for quite a number of years. I was dealing with uh, severe depression. Um, I I became suicidal, um, even with my relationship with the Lord. But God being so good, because of that relationship, I was able to pray through, able to hear the voice of God Mm -hmm. as he gave me strategies to overcome Mm -hmm. the depression. Um, So growing up, I did have some challenges, but overall, it was just wonderful. Um, I followed my parents everywhere they went uh, to minister. Um, I became a lay preacher with the Methodist Church at the age of 14. Uh, going wow. to the villages to <laughs> to preach the gospel. Oh my um, God. So it was an adventure, you know. Uh, wow. I can't I can't say anything bad about my about growing up. They were wonderful years of being trained in in the things of God and building up my relationship with just wonderful parents. And with that being said, isn't that sad that when how your own people your own environment, mm-hmm. your your community can play a great impact in your life and can contribute yeah. to um, the downfall or mm-hmm. the upbringing of a human being. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are real issues that we deal with. I don't. I I wouldn't want to go there, but I have to go there. That mm-hmm. in many of these situations, when I looked back, I realized it was a, a, a more of a an intimidation factor. They were intimidated yes, by me. By you. And it was envy. Yes. You know, it came out of a place of envy. Right. Um, but I didn't know that. You but know, you didn't understand. I didn't at understand right. at the time. All you wanted was acceptance. That's right. All yeah. I wanted was acceptance. And probably they feeling I was coming from the US, I felt I was all it's that a and a bag of chips. But <laughs> it was the opposite, you know. Right. <laughs> so um, that's what happens in real life, unfortunately. But 
but I'm glad I did go through that. You know, I, I look at my life and I say that every single challenge that I went through, mm -hmm. God enabled, he allowed me to go through it mm -hmm. so that I'll be able to minister to people. Right, right now, if I meet a depressed person, You're I don't need to, I don't need them to tell me. I can smell it. I can see it, you know, and I can identify with it and I can, you know, minister to that person. So I look back and I say, well, it was worth the experience, yes, you was. know. You know, because yeah. I, I was telling my husband this um, last year, towards the end of the year, mm -hmm. coming into this year, you know, sometimes I just interviewed a woman of God two days ago. Okay. And um, we were talking about depression, mm -hmm. how it affects females and mm -hmm. especially women in the work of God. Yeah. And not only female, but just people in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. There are a mm -hmm. lot of them that are suffering from depression, but they're ashamed to talk about That's it. That's right. Because when you talk about it, you're like, how can you be late? How are you thinking about how you're going to be labeled? Mm -hmm. How are you going to be looked at? Are they going to accept that's you? Right. Are they going to love you? Yeah. And it's just going to add on to that. Mm -hmm. But you know, mm -hmm. that's all the enemy's tactics. That's right. To just put you in a box that's and right. for you not to function mm -hmm. the way how God had, had made you to function. That's right. You that's know, right. but I feel like God allow you to go through certain things in life so mm -hmm. you can have that experience and know how to relate. That's right. To people mm -hmm. who have been in that situation. That's right. You know, yes. And, and also to be compassionate. Yes. You know, have a compassionate heart. And, and understand what people are going through. You know, yes. you cannot really minister to someone. Well, you can to a certain extent, but the way a person ministers to someone when they've been, been through, through that thing it's different. Is, is more impactful than someone who hasn't been through it. It's funny yeah. how you say that because before I left Jersey, I was taking my internship to become a, um, a certified drug and alcohol counselor. Oh, wow. So I was in one of these sessions where we mm -hmm. conduct like um, counseling sessions for mm -hmm. those um, um, recovery addicts. Mm -hmm. And one of them just stood up one day and he's like, he was really upset. He said, I don't understand why students like you, that he was talking to me, like how student like you, who has never been in the, in the, in the, in the, in the route of being an addicted person mm. or who has never abused drugs or been, right. um, drank any alcohol before mm. and you have the audacity to come wow. and sit here and just try to mentor us. Mm. How can you relate? Wow. And when he said that, I went home and told my husband, mm. I was like, Mm, he has a point. Yeah, he does. He said, your counseling, <laughs> it's coming from the yeah, textbook. That's right. And I can relate mm -hmm, to you, mm -hmm. but I can relate to someone who has been to rehab. That's right. Who has mm -hmm. been a recovered addict. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. when he or she talks to me, I know where it's coming from. That's right. Before I open my mouth, he knows what I'm thinking. That's right. So it's really mm -hmm. amazing how God has us go through these yes. situations and through the trials. Mm -hmm. So we understand mm -hmm. how to relate or communicate to the people that God, the ministries that God is preparing us that's right. to operate in. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but it takes me back to the point where you said your mother was your parents were struggling with infertility. Yes. That brings me to the book. Mm -hmm. Hannah Song. <laughs> yes. You're an author yes. of two books. Yes. Hannah Song and Hotline to Heaven. Yes. So uh, today we're here to discuss about Hannah Song. That's right. Tell me about Hannah Song. Well, Hannah Song is a book that I wrote out of my experience of infertility also. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's just a powerful book that I wrote out of my experience. You, you, you feel all my emotions. It reads like a, a fiction novel, mm -hmm. but everything in it is true to my life. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's in two parts. The first part is where I tell my story. Uh, you visit the doctor's office with me. You uh, uh, be able to experience every emotion I experience of hopelessness, of frustration, you know, all that. And then the second part is where um, I teach, you know, the lessons I learned mm -hmm. out of my infertility. But I have to say, praise Jesus, Amen. that God gave me the victory mm -hmm. over infertility. And that's what Hannah's song is all about. You know, in Samuel, uh, uh, Hannah sings a song of victory mm -hmm. when God gives her Samuel. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I titled the book Hannah's song, because God also gave me the victory over infertility. So um, the book is a powerful, powerful read. It is. And it's blessing the lives of many people. It is. Yes. I am telling you, <laughs> the first day I read that book and I was literally, when I started, because I'm not, I'm, God help me, I'm not a, I'm not a, 
I'm not crazy about reading. Yeah. I'm a lazy reader. <laughs> you know, so the book has mm-hmm. to really interest me yes. for me to sit there and read it. Mm-hmm. The first time I held that book, when I started reading it, I went through chapter one, chapter two, yeah. and it's getting better. And I'm every time I read that book, yeah. it makes me like, my husband is like, oh, you got to read this book. You don't understand. <laughs> like, it just, like, you. I, I feel, just like you said, the book takes you on the journey with That's you. That's right. Like, you mm-hmm. feel this anxiety inside mm-hmm. of you. Like, God, really? She went through this? That's and right. Every step of the way, and the most saddest part about the whole book is when every time you talk about how much tears you shed, mm-hmm. how much pain you went through, That's right. how badly you wanted a child. Mm-hmm. And it all started in chapter one when you were yes. in college. Yes. You went to um, this um, college crusade. That's right. Tell me about it when the man of God gave you the prophecy. Yeah, so I, I was in college studying for um, my architectural degree. And this prophet came to campus. They were having a prophetic conference. And um, he ministered, 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 and then came to me and started just downloading stuff about my life. And he said, one thing about you is that I see you getting married. Mm. At that time, I hadn't even, my husband and I weren't even dating. We were just friends. Wow. We had nothing to do. I mean, I didn't even think of him in, in those terms. And this prophet said, I see you marrying a man of God, and the wedding is so beautiful. <gasps> but after that, I see you chewing cola nut and weeping. And for those of you who don't know, Kola nut. Kola nut is one of the bitter nuts bitter, yeah. in, 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 in West Africa, Africa mm-hmm. you know. And so he said, I see you chewing kola nut and weeping. And the Lord is saying that you are going to be barren ah. after you get married. But God said, he, he, don't be afraid and don't be discouraged because you have to go through it. You have to go through it, but don't be discouraged because I will give you the victory. Mm -hmm. And then after he said that, he said, oh, and I see, why have you been praying for daughters? And I said, I haven't even been praying, you know. I'm not married yet. I'm not married yet. But he said, well, I see three girls around you. So I said, wow. But I didn't hear anything about those daughters. All I heard was the barrenness. And it broke me. It just confused me. I was so upset. I'm like, aren't prophets supposed to bring solutions? Yeah. I mean, w- w- why wouldn't he just say, I, I, I arrest the spirit of infertility? Exactly. Why would God, who says he loves me so much, allow me to go through barrenness? Mm. And so I decided to fast and pray and change God's mind. <laughs> I went home. In fact, no, I was still in school. I went back to my room, mm-hmm. got a phone. Uh, we had a, a phone station or whatever. Mm-hmm. Got on the phone, called my mom and wept on the phone and told her what had happened. And she just said, look, don't even worry. We'll, we'll pray about it. Mm-hmm. It hasn't happened yet. We'll pray about it. If it, it should happen, the Lord will give us you grace to go, oh. go through that just as he gave me grace. And she reminded me, but the prophet said, but the prophet said that God will give you the victory. Mm -hmm. So we prayed together and and that was it. I fasted, cried, fasted, cried, did the best I could, uh, praying that, well, what I had done had turned the situation around. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know till I got married and And I got got to know soon after I got married from the wedding night for six months. I was hemorrhaging nonstop. So how were you able to break that news to your newlywed husband? So, well, I don't know. I think in conversation, I must have mentioned it or something. But, you know, he's a man of faith. (laughs) I don't even think he even even registered with him. (laughs) You know, even when we were going through the situation, you know, he, he would behave like, Look, nothing this is nothing. Is this yeah. is nothing, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but remember, the prophet told you you're going to get married to a man of God. That's right. Who is going to understand your situation. That's right. And, you know, That's just right. trust God together with you. That's right. That's and right. the part that I read when you said you went on honeymoon, <laughs> and he said, you know what? 
on that wedding day when you were taking your vows, yes. you re like the prophecy just came yes. flushing yes. through your mind. Yes. And you teared up. Yes. You cried and cried and yes. cried. Yes. And you said, you know what? You wanted to go to the um, to your honeymoon. That's right. And you said, let me go enjoy. Yeah. And after this, I'll deal with the journey. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I'm fine. That's I just right. started laughing. I said, go, let, let, let me enjoy the moment. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And um, eventually you moved to the United States with your husband. Yes. That's yes. where the journey started. That's where the journey started. We got married in uh, October and we moved to uh, the States in January. Oh, wow. So that was very short. short. Now, when we got to the States, I was still bleeding mm -hmm. from the wedding night in October till March. And you, you didn't know, understand and why. And I didn't understand why. You know, so we didn't have jobs, no insurance, nothing. Oh, my God. So how to even get to a doctor to find out what was going on. And I was getting paler and paler, more anemic. And my husband being a doctor got worried. And uh, God being so good, I was staying with an aunt who knew a family doctor. Mm -hmm. um, so he saw me pro bono, uh, mm -hmm. free of charge. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when he made the, you know, diagnosis, diagnosis. that I had a condition that giving birth would either be extremely difficult, I might have to do fertility treatments, or it would be impossible. And the condition that was you were diagnosed with is called PCO. The, the condition is called PCOS mm -hmm. uh, in full polycystic ovarian syndrome. For viewers that are watching who are not familiar with that, how can you break that down to women who might, not, who might be going through the same thing but don't understand yeah. exactly what it is? Well, polycystic ovarian syndrome is it's interesting, but it's very prevalent amongst black women and Hispanic women. Mm. Um, it is a condition where you have a hormonal imbalance. Mm. And that hormonal imbalance causes you not to ovulate. Okay? You don't ovulate. So if you can't ovulate, then your egg cannot be fertilized. Wow. So you cannot conceive, you know. And there are many symptoms uh, with uh, PCOS. You have thyroid issues. You have weight gain that you can't control. You have excess facial hair. Your skin turns color, mm. you know. And it, it's, it's a very, it's, it's not a good, it's not a good disease. And you have lots of cysts on your ovaries. Oh, boy. Uh -huh. So it makes it very, extremely difficult and in some cases impossible to conceive. Is it curable? Well, they are able to cure. It's curable um, to a certain extent. Um, they are able to cause you to overlay with treatment, medication, um, uh IVF, th those kinds of things, they can, they can enable you to conceive, mm -hmm. you know, but it's very pricey and it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. So that takes me to the next question about mm -hmm. when you mentioned about IVF. Mm -hmm. I know um, as, woman, as a woman of faith, mm -hmm. was that something you considered during your journey? And yeah. Um, after taking my medications for so long, and by the way, they gave me this medication called Clomid. Um, the side effects were torturous, hmm. nausea, vomiting, uh, diarrhea nonstop, feeling, just feeling weird, you know, uh, skin blotchy. Oh um, so I did at that point when that medication wasn't working, I did consider IVF. But I had a friend who was doing it, and <laughs> the way she was describing it, I, I'm like, I don't think I can do it because... Uh, she was describing even the length of the needle oh. that you use to inject, inject yourself. yourself. I'm like, and I'm scared of needles. So. And it's a self-injected <laughs> self, thing. You got to do those things yourself sometimes. I'm like, so I did consider it out of desperation, but I didn't really go for it. Yeah. Because of the fear of the needles? Because, uh, well, I think that in my journey, I came to the point, uh, and in the book you read, mm -hmm. where I just decided, look, Father, if you are going to give me a child, you'll give me a child. Mm -hmm. You said you, you would help me overcome. Yeah. Yeah. I believe your word. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just throw these medications into the trash can because I don't want them anymore. And another side effect of uh, Clomid is some women have had ovarian cancer. 
Oh, and I'm, I'm looking at all those side effects. I'm looking at how it's making my life a living hell because I go to work and I'm going to the bathroom like 10 times a day. I you mean, can't even you can't concentrate. You are getting distracted. So I came to a point. I said, Father, it's enough. I, I, if you give me a child, wonderful. If you want, it's okay. So and, I just gave it up and just decided to live. And there's a part in the book where I was reading, you got mad at God. You said, oh, that's it. I'm not going to ask you no more. Yeah. I don't want it. Yeah. If you're going to bless me, bless me. I that's was reading right. that part. I was like, oh, this is a that's woman right. that has given up. Because throughout your journey, you fasted. Yes. Every every chapter you read, mm -hmm. there is not a chapter you did not mention fasting and prayer, mm -hmm. fasting and prayer, mm -hmm. fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. And you and I were discussing on the phone that this, your journey that you went on. Yeah even brought you more closer to God. Talk it to did. me about that experience. This this journey really um, forced me into my prayer closet. Hmm. There were not many people I could talk to about my infertility. In fact, there wasn't anyone I wanted to talk to it about. It was just so painful, you know. And the only person I could talk to was God and maybe my husband at a certain point. You know, even with my husband, there was an issue. You know, I I, I didn't want to bring it up because I felt I was disappointing him, mm -hmm. you know, and he loves kids, you know. Right. So it was just painful to me that this man who loves children, I couldn't give him. So there was no outlet for me. The only outlet was God. Wow. So it forced me into his presence for soca, for the Holy Spirit became my comforter. You know, and and that was just a place I could, the only place I could go wow. for peace of mind. Yeah. So um it also forced me to go to the word to look up for scriptures on healing, on the promises of God regarding healing mm -hmm. and deliverance, you know. Um it allowed me to get into a place where God would teach me warfare. The Bible says that he trains my hands for war and leads me in triumph. Right. And he trained my hands for war concerning generational curses, concerning witchcraft projections. Because I, I was dealing with all that. Hmm. But nobody told me what I was dealing with. But the Holy Spirit would just, in, in prayer, would just download. It's a time to war. It's time to fight. It's time to decree. It's time to... Uh, uh, destroy witchcraft projections, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was being taught of the Lord. I didn't realize what was going on, you know, but God was actually preparing me for ministry right. through my ordeal. And it's funny how you mentioned about generational curses and yeah. witchcrafts and everything, because mm -hmm. in the beginning, when a man of God gave you the prophecy, mm -hmm. remember he said, you're going to be barren, but that's right. you have children that's that right. he saw in the future. That's right. But that but means mm -hmm. you have to fight for it. That's right. You That's you're right. not just going to sit down mm -hmm. and put your hands on your lap That's and say, right. I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. You got to stand mm -hmm. up and fight for it. Yep. You know, just like in the end, towards the end of your book, when you finally conceived, when you came from, we're going to get to that. You yeah. know, the, the law told you that, Fight for it. That's right. Fight for your child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so that's the same. Sometimes prophecy comes for us not to sit down and mm -hmm. just wait on God. That's right. But to pray and stand up on the word of God to right. make sure his prophecy comes to pass. Because, now, yeah. Go ahead. Let me piggyback on that because the, I sense very strongly I need to talk about this issue about fighting for your children. Mm -hmm. You know, infertility, <laughs> I used to think that. It was just an attack of the enemy against me mm -hmm. and my husband. But God taught me through the journey that it was not just an attack against us, just to make us feel miserable and hopeless, but it was against the, it was an attack against our seed. Oh. Our seed, our children who will bruise the head of the serpent. That was what the battle was about. Mm -hmm. Because God knew and trusted that we would bring forth righteous seeds that we would teach the word of God to. And in turn, those children would also birth righteous seed. Mm -hmm. So the enemy was after the generations after us mm -hmm. and not just us. And that is why it is a battle for the children's lives. Oh my God. You know, you are not fighting just so you get a child and 
pimp them up in right. pink and blue, show them you up. know, and like show an them up. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah. Oh, baby, at one month, baby, at two months. Mm -hmm. No, there's more to that. There is more to that there's battle, to that. you know. And so I just wanted to insert that that there is a reason wow. for the battle, and it is a battle. You can't just sit down and say, "Oh, when it happens, it happens." No. You've got to fight, fight for in it. this life. The, this life that we live will not serve you what you desire on a silver platter. Uh, you will have to battle in the spirit. You have to fight for it. Even when the children are being born, oh, that's when the battle starts. That's when it even escalates. Yes. Oh my God, <laughs> this is interesting. We have to take a break. Um, I mean, if you're watching this show, I know there's someone out there that God is talking, speaking to right now. And um, if you had just been sitting down waiting, oh, I'm going to wait on the Lord. In, the, in due time, it will happen. It will happen, but you yes. have to fight for it, just like That's the woman right. of God said. But we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to go detail into the book, Hannah's Song. And I know you will learn two or three things from here. And, and this will motivate you to just stand firm in the Lord and, and get to your prayer closet. We'll be right back. Welcome back, viewers. If you're just tuning in, you're watching the Cape Kingdom Promoter TV Network, and um, I'm here with a woman of God, Miss Minister Teresa Laye from Ghana. She's um, sharing her testimony of years of infer infertility, and finally, the Lord remembered her like she, like God remembered Hannah. So um, you're joining into a conversation that I know is going to be a blessing to you. So, woman of God, we're talking about fighting for our seeds. Yes. And then it takes me back to the word of God when you talk about Abraham and the seeds of Abraham, the generation of Abraham. Mm -hmm. We all know the story of Abraham, how he struggled. His wife That's struggled right. to have their son mm -hmm. or their child. Mm -hmm. And we know when that child was born, we know the, you know, the history and what the impact that mm -hmm. he made. That's right. So... It takes me back to the moment where you were sick in the Lord's face mm -hmm. for your child. Yes. You visited a, um, a family friend, mm -hmm. Bale. Yeah. And tell me about that experience, what well, you encountered. Okay. So I, this is a sister, Sister Bale, who actually, when you read, was very instrumental mm -hmm. when I actually conceived. Mm -hmm. um, and she's a very faithful sister. I used to take trips, uh, retreats to a house now and then when I got stressed out. And uh, this was one of those occasions. And um, I had fasted. And uh, in the night, in the middle of the night, um, I was sleeping. After praying and praying and praying, I fell asleep. And I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw the face of a baby. Mm. And it was so beautiful. It was so bright. It was... And she was smiling. I, I, in fact, I didn't know whether it was a she or he. <laughs> it was just smiling, toothless smile at oh me. And I woke up. And as soon as I woke up, I just 
started shouting, I just saw my baby, I just saw my baby, I just saw my baby, you know? And that was so powerful to me because now I had a face, you know? Initially, it, it was just a fantasy. Right. It was just, you know, in my mind. But now when I prayed, I had a face to pray with, right. to pray for, right. you know, and that was just, I believe, just God in his mercy. Encouraging you. Encouraging me that I promised and it's possible. Oh, you my know? God. Yeah. I can just imagine that feeling when you woke up from that dream, like, yes. where's my baby? You know, yeah. just... <laughs> And just that searching. Yes, yes. And um, was it after that moment that you started going to the store looking for baby clothes? It wasn't too long after that. Um, it, it wasn't immediately either. But there was a time I, I went, I was back in college doing my, uh, my MBA um, because I'd given up the architectural profession. Mm -hmm. My husband wanted me to continue learning. He's a studious person, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. And so I was back in school. I'd come from school. I was driving home and the Lord said, go and get an outfit for your baby. I, 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 it was a voice I heard in my mind. On your way home? On my way home. And I believe that it was the Lord actually. Mm. And I, I'm like, Really? I haven't even ever, you know, I've bought clothes for people's, but they you, know, uh, baby you know, baby showers and right. things. But for myself, I mean, <laughs> so I, I, in fact, I didn't even have the presence of mind to go to Baby Zara. So okay. I just saw a Toys R Us. Right. So I said, well, Toys R Us, maybe they'll have baby clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I just entered the Toys R Us and uh, found this pack of two mm -hmm. onesies, mm -hmm. green and white. And I bought it. And I, I, I took it to the car, and I opened it, and I put it on my cheek. I like the part <laughs> when you said, I have to look twice if yeah. nobody was yeah. watching. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, if somebody sees what I'm doing, they'll think I'm, she's I'm crazy. crazy. <laughs> or maybe a pedophile or something. <laughs> she said, I have to, when I was yeah. reading the book, like I'm sitting here by myself yeah. laughing, like, you know, I'm losing my mind. Yeah. And she said, yeah. I have to look if yeah. anybody's watching and oh, I just melt yeah. my face in there. Yeah. But that was a huge yeah. step of faith. That's right. Not That's everybody right. can obey that type of That's that's right. Because one, again, mm -hmm. fear the enemy yes. brings in your yes. mind. Yes. What yes. will people think? What will people say? That's right. That's and then right. you took those clothes home. I took them home in obedience. I just took them home. Mm -hmm. I went to the living room. I took one, put the other one on an armchair, one of the armchairs, and started praying over it. Oh, I held it like a baby. Right. The ones in my arms, and I started praying mm -hmm. and speaking to, oh, you are so beautiful. Stop crying. Stop oh crying. God. And I was behaving like a mother, like a mother, you know, by faith. I don't know. I believe the Spirit of God just <laughs> enabled me to do those actions, but they were prophetic. Right. So my husband comes from home, and he sees these ones he's <laughs> lying around in the living room. He's like, hey, what's going on here? And I told him, I said, I believe the Lord asked me, me to go and buy these onesies as an act of faith. And being the very intelligent <laughs> husband he is, <laughs> he just stepped, he right in. stepped right in and followed my example. So there would be times we'll be watching TV, he'll hold one onesie, oh. I'll hold the other. He'll be praying in tongues over one, maybe just praying over one, I'll just be praying over one. And that was our life till... It and actually happened. And and I remember reading that part when you said that that action, yes. that act of faith and obedience actually brought you and your husband That's more right. closer That's to right. a point you were comfortable to talk about your, infertil right. in your infertility. That's right. Because That's there was right. a time you said you couldn't discuss it with your husband. Yes. You yes. would think maybe he, he's pressuring you yes. or, you know. You know, that is one of the, the, the saddest things about the battle uh, of, of infertility for couples. Um, it can draw a wedge between them, mm -hmm. you know. Um, here was a case where my husband was being very sensitive to me. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to bring up the, the problem just so it doesn't put pressure on me mm -hmm. or make me feel like he loved me any less. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I was like, he doesn't even care. He doesn't even care. He doesn't even ask any questions. He doesn't, you know, so he's trying to <laughs> so, be sensitive yeah. and I'm, I'm taking it the wrong Personal, way. Yeah. And so we weren't talking about it. Maybe as a doctor, you know, I'll go for a 
you know, a visit, doctor's visit and come back and he'll be like, how did it go? And I'll just say it was okay, you know. Just like that. Or he just gave me the same medication, said the same thing, you know. But I, he, he didn't feel my struggle. I didn't tell him what I was going through, how humiliating those visits to the hospital were, what I was emotionally going through. You know, we didn't get to that point until that those onesies came in. Yeah, but- when those onesies came in, we began to pray together more. And that broke the ice. That's and we were God able wanted. to begin yeah. to communicate on a deeper level mm-hmm. regarding infertility. So I didn't feel like na- it was my battle right. alone. Yeah. And many women are going through it. And you feel like it's your own battle. Battle, yeah. but the men have to become very sensitive yeah. and understand that it's not the woman's battle; it's both of you. Yeah, you know. So God gave you that instruction to let your husband understand that it's not only her. That's right. The That's prophecy right. came for her, but you came to That's him alone right. to make sure it comes to pass. That's right. That's right. You know, mm-hmm. and um, I remembered in I wish I had a book with me when I was reading it. It was mm-hmm. talking about one time you were invited to go over to a family friend's house, mm-hmm. and you had to go. And <laughs> that part, I I went back and hold that book. I was reading it over and over, just that. <laughs> Just the 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 the, the, inst- the instance where you were in the bathroom yes. getting ready to go, mm-hmm. and you looked yourself in the mirror and you said, "Oh God, I'm ugly. Mm. I'm not beautiful. Mm. I'm not this. I'm not that." And that childhood memory came back mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when you felt rejected. That's when right. the people didn't acknowledge you mm. or accepted you. Yeah. And you cried and cried and cried and cried yeah. on the floor in the bathroom. Mm. And tell me about that experience when you felt the presence of God encouraging you. Yes, yes. Like you said, you know, um, I, I, I said PCOS is a hormonal imbalance. Mm-hmm. Another, si- another symptom that comes with PCOS is extreme mood swings. Right. Extreme. You can be angry one minute. And then depressed the next minute, Mm. you know. And that day was a day for depression. (laughs) (laughs) And I was extremely depressed. Oh, wow. Um, I was trying to lose weight. And each time I went to the doctor's office, it would be the same thing. Go to a gym, stop eating wrong food, lose weight. But the symptom is that you gain weight. Without even eating. Exactly. (laughs) Losing weight is almost impossible. And I had gained so much weight. And then my skin, the the skin on my face was all patches and different colors. And I just felt so ugly. And, um, And I wept and I wept and I said, Father, apart from not having a child, do I have to contend with this too? I used to be an attractive woman. Today, look at me. I wept and wept and wept. And then the Holy Spirit started comforting. You know, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. It is. He is a comforter. He is a helper. Look, I don't know how I would have made it through without, the Holy without hearing. And it's important to be able to hear him too. Mm-hmm. Because you can't be comforted unless you can hear the comfort. Right. And he comforted me and said, no, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. Just kept encouraging me and telling me it's okay, comforting me. And and I just received. And we have to be able to receive the comfort. Yeah. Um, this is a deep level, a deeper level wow. of relationship with God, where you are able to tap into wow. his strength, you know. And that is what happened that day in the bathroom. And as the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, I just calmed down and I was soothed. And I wiped my tears and put on my makeup, held my head high. And I walked out that bathroom (laughs) as a victor over depression. Amen. Amen. And you you mentioned about certain um, issues, emotional issues that Mm -hmm. you struggled with during your, um, your fight for your children. Yes. Let me understand or let viewer understand when, when in your case, mm-hmm. you, you said there are instances when they will invite you anytime you hear yeah. that my friend is having another baby, mm-hmm. you get so envious, so yes. jealous, so yes. bitter. Explain yes. to me how, like someone that is going through that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I call it baby envy, mm-hmm. baby envy. Um, like you said, I, you know, that was the, point of my life where most of my colleagues were having babies, Mm. you know, and so 
every month at least maybe once every two months at least i would hear somebody somebody's is pregnant a- or somebody's just giving birth or someone you know and uh though i was a believer i was quite mature i believe um i knew envy and jealousy was a sin mm-hmm. but i couldn't help it just i just couldn't it. help it yeah. it was a re- almost like a reflex action you mm-hmm. know and I, I would swing between gratitude and joy for my friend because i love my friend but then the next minute i'm like why why her not, not me why i mean how much better is she than me Lord, really? Who is she? Why can't she be exactly? Than yeah, you know. So, envy was one of the very deep uh, uh, issues I had to deal with. In fact, there was one day where my husband said, "Oh, let's go to uh, a baby shower uh, mm-hmm. for a friend," and I'm like, "I'm not going." And he was just <laughs> tired of that. I mean, <laughs> always it was the same answer. For one thing, I was I was embarrassed about the way I looked. For another thing, I hated seeing people sympathetically look at me mm. at those functions, like trying to read my mind. Oh, poor woman, you when know. Oh, happen? when will it be her turn? So she, what is going on with it? Why are they, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Answering stupid questions like, mm-hmm. why are you waiting so long? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> hello, if I could have a child, I would have had a child, a room you know. <laughs> and so dealing with all that, I didn't want to go. And he said, okay, if you won't go, here's the present, wrap it up. Oh, that was the worst thing he could have asked me to do. I took a, a, a wrapping sheet and I didn't even use the invisible tape. <laughs> you know those thick the black tapes. gray <laughs> tips? Oh. <laughs> just, just did whatever. <laughs> I think it was the worst wrapped <laughs> present ever. And he wouldn't have a problem he with it. He wouldn't have. Uh, uh, he would, man, he, he wouldn't dare come back to me <laughs> to rewrap it. <laughs> and I'm, it came to a point, getting to the end, and I saw what I had done, and I started weeping. Oh. I said, Father, is this what I've become? Is this how nasty I've become inside? I've allowed my situation. I've allowed, yeah. I've become a, like a monster. Mm-hmm. And I started weeping, Father, deliver me, deliver me. I don't want to be envious anymore. Father, I don't want to be like this anymore. And then started the journey of deliverance. The Lord would take me through the word. And it's in Hannah's song, especially the part two, Mm -hmm. where you read about how to deal with baby envy. And so the Lord started breaking my heart, dealing with my heart. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point, he would give me instructions. If I hear anyone is having a baby shower, I ask, is there anything I can do? Aww. You know, is there anything I can do? I would, you know, put myself out there to be helpful. Mm-hmm. Or if I hear someone is pregnant, I'll put them on my prayer list oh, and wow. pray for a smooth delivery, smooth, you know. So I became, <laughs> it was an action I had to take to mm-hmm. kill that demon, right. you know. And God being so good, he did deliver me from envy. Because it can be very dangerous to it, you. It as can a be envy. In, in, in fact, dangerous. it was a hindrance between my relationship with him, the relationship between me and God, mm-hmm. and that one you, I, you can't touch. Yeah. I cannot have that, you know, because he's my he's my 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 he's my cheerleader. Right. You know, if I can't interact with my cheerleader, what am I gonna do? So, um. I had to deal with that so that I would have peace with God. Amen. Yes. Amen. We're going to take a quick break when we come back and then we can just um, wrap it up and talk about how God really, um, the moment when it all happened, when God remembered her, just like he remembered um, Hannah. So stay tuned. When I come back, you get to hear about the, the, the full dose of the testimony. Amen. I'll be right back.
Welcome back, viewers. If you're just tuning in, um, you're watching the Kingdom Promoters TV Network, and I'm Minister Fatike Samora. I'm interviewing Miss. I'm interviewing Minister Teresa Laye from Ghana. She's sharing her testimony of many years of infertility. So, welcome into this conversation. Minister, we just stopped into the point where you were talking about, we're talking about a spirit of envy. Mm -hmm. And um, is it something that is common with people or women that are going through infertility issues? I think it's common with anyone who is waiting on God for something mm -hmm. that everybody else seems to get, but is not getting. Um, and I believe specifically with infertility, it is a problem that women deal with. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And um, let's talk about the instance when the snow on your car. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, throughout the journey, God would give me these pockets of encouragement just to let me know he's there. He hasn't <laughs> forgotten me. Right. So I go to work. It's winter time in Waterbury, Connecticut, and uh, it's lunchtime, and I'm going to get into my car. And I see on the bonnet of my car, mm -hmm. the snow has fallen and has written God capital, in capitals, G-O-D, wow. on my bonnet. And I look at it, and I'm like, <laughs> did a human being do this, or is oh, this God nature, God. or what? <laughs> But it didn't look like a finger had done it. Uh, it looked like it had just snowed landed. and it had just formed that pattern. So one of my colleagues was actually also leaving. I said, come, come, come. And <laughs> are my eyes deceiving me or am I seeing what I'm seeing? She's like, wow. oh my gosh, what is that? <laughs> wow. And we were like amazed, you know. Unfortunately, at that time, I didn't have a camera. <laughs> I wanted to. I said, I wish I could put the whole car in, in the freezer. freezer. <laughs> Just freeze it, you know. So I'll have evidence, you oh know. But God. that was just something amazing to me. I'm like, Father, I, I hear you. I know you're here. You Isn't know. it amazing how sometimes God <laughs> encourages his own? Yeah, yeah. So that's why yeah. he always said, I'll never leave you or forsake yes, you. Yes, you know? yes. So now let's go to the, the part mm -hmm. when the Lord fulfilled his promise. Yes. Yes. And towards the end of the book, when I was reading, I kept reading, I kept reading. And I said, I need to get to the point where it all happened. <laughs> and it finally happened. You yeah. went out to eat with um, your husband and Bolle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was there. Yeah. And you went to pick up the food and you started feeling some type of way. Explain yeah. to me how that feeling was. But you know, just soon before that, mm -hmm. I, I, told, I wrote in the book that I told God, that I'm going to go on one last fast. Yes. Was it 14 days? 14 days. Mm -hmm. One last fast. And after that, I will never, never. ask him for baby again, oh, for wow. a baby again. I will never fast because of infertility again. So I started on February 1st, hmm. 2005. And uh, I just fasted fasted, went through the fast, and um, getting to the end on my birthday, which was 13th February. Oh, a lot of things have happened on my birthday. Oh, wow. Actually, I, I said a fleece concerning my husband, that God answer me on my birthday, let him propose on my birthday <laughs> if he's the man. <laughs> and he did, he proposed at 11.50 something, close to midnight on my birthday. Through it with a letter. So second, this was the second time. Oh my God. This was the second time God was going to do something major on my birthday. So on my birthday, I went to church, saw Bolly at church, and she's like, happy birthday. What are we doing? What are we doing? That time my husband was uh, working. I said, oh, I'm, I'm fasting, so no celebrating for me. She looked at me. She said, <laughs> No, God said that I should tell you that whatever you are fasting about, he's done it already. Amen. And so begin to praise him. Let's go out and eat. <laughs> I like Bolly said, already. Mm. I said, mm, as for this one, no, no. I, I don't I think so. Uh, so I went, I went, I said, she should give me a minute to confer with my father. So I went, I went to some corner. I said, Father, really? <laughs> really? You know, I really want to break the fast, but <laughs> really? He said, and I felt in my spirit, the Lord said, yes, go and to. eat. 
So I went and I broke the fast with some fruits and some soup. And, and that was it. A few days later, uh, Bolly invited me to go and do this uh, modeling. Mm. By then, I had lost weight because I was fasting, right? <laughs> so I was looking you good. <laughs> <laughs> well, after that fasting, Jonathan went with us, took some pictures while I was modeling for one of these stores, uh, female stores. And afterwards, Bolly said, let's go out for dinner. So we went out to a Chinese place and, uh, man, I was, my stomach was feeling weird for some reason. And I'm, I have a good appetite, you know, <laughs> especially for Chinese food. <laughs> but that day... I can tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. where we met. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where we met, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were telling Apostle's wife the That's other right. day. You said, you told Apostle's wife, you said, I met them at a Chinese, Chinese store. Apostle's restaurant. wife just lost it. <laughs> she said, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of things, good things happen at the Chinese restaurant. So well. <laughs> it must be the season. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I went and for some reason I was nauseous. I, I didn't feel like eating, and, which was very weird. So anyway, um, my husband asked, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I feel weird, you know. And I, I was having a lot of uh, digestive, it, it was just unpleasant. And Bolly looked at me in a very strange way. <laughs> she didn't say anything. We left, went home. As soon as we got home, I took some medicine, went and laid down. And my husband called, uh, the phone rang and my husband picked it. Apparently, it was Bolly. My husband came and said, Bolly said, don't give you any medicine, oh, and I could be the baby, oh. I said, oh, That Bolly must be a uh, Sister Bolly, as for Sister Bolly, she's too funny. And I just... You just ignored I it. I just ignored it. Hmm. I just ignored it. Well, this thing continued for a while, you know. So anyway, uh, it wasn't because of that, actually, that I, one day after school, decided to go and buy pregnancy tests. Mm -hmm. I decided to go and buy ovulation tests, pregnancy tests, brought it home, not knowing that my husband was suspecting, but he, he, he was just watching anything. me, right. just watching me. You because know? he's a medical doctor. That's right. So I, brought, I came home and I said, hmm. <laughs> So yeah, you, you believe what I just did. I went to buy a whole bunch of ovulation and pregnancy tests. He said, oh, go and take the pregnancy test. I said, who? Oh, why? <laughs> He's like, oh, but just go and take it. I'm like, what? It's very expensive, you know. I, I'm not going to waste this pregnancy test. Just in case I can return ah, it back. No way. No, no, no. I'm not going to waste it. He said, oh, go and check it. I said, you know what? I'm not going to put myself through this again, mm. you know. It, it, I'm, I'm not pregnant. According to my cycle, even, I shouldn't be pregnant. So he worried me till I said, okay, just to keep my husband quiet, I'll take it. Oh. So I went and I took it. I looked at the thing. According to the box, the test is positive. Praise God. I'm like, no. Mm -mm. You see how we are, yes, human, human beings. We After pray years. to God. <laughs> and when God answers it, we refuse you say, no, to believe. Not God. I <laughs> said, no. I took it to John. I said, what? look look at this test. I'm sure it's even faulty. <laughs> Check the box. Is, it, is this really true? Is it positive or what? He said it's positive. I said, oh. With the luck I've been having, I'm sure it's a faulty, it's, it's a faulty pregnancy oh, test. He said, oh, go and take some more. Well, how many more do you have? I said, oh, there are three more in the so put everything. He said, put everything in the thing. I said, oh, but I, I, I'm out of specimen. He said, drink he said, water. Go and drink water. Go and drink water. <laughs> I drank and drank and drank. So we're sitting there watching TV. Uh -huh. Oh, don't you want to go and take the test? I said, I don't feel like peeing. He said, oh. After a while, go and take that. I said, I'm not ready. Oh, so God. after a while, I went, put all the three pregnancy tests in. Hmm. They all came back positive. Oh, my God. And that's when we realized I had conceived. When I, when I read that part, I was just, this, this was like me on the bed. I was like, yes. <laughs> Your book is so life-changing. It's so amazing. Like it's, I was telling my husband, I said, hmm. maybe this is a movie. Yeah. And I make it. It could be. 
you know, this book, when you read it, it yeah. takes you down on your journey yeah. every step of the way. And yeah. you're reading it, this anxiety is building yeah. up. It's be like, what's next? What yes. next? That's how amazing God is. <laughs> yes. You know, when God is working with you to a journey That's and it right. gives you that permission to share mm -hmm. your, your testimony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't care who read it. Yes. I don't care who watches that movie. Yes. It will change somebody's life. Yes. And yes. that's what happened in yes. your book. Yes. And finally, you you got pregnant. Yes. You went on the first appointment for, do, for ultrasound? Yes. Your first ultrasound appointment. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened. <laughs> well, the first one was good. You know, the first... Um, appointment was good in that they detected I was pregnant. Then said I had to follow up, like you said, with an ultrasound exam. Mm -hmm. So I go to the doctor's office, they put me on the ultrasound, and he and the nurse are very, like they just keep staring that and staring and staring and very strange stern looks, and I'm like, what is going on? And afterwards, I came out of the room, the doctor says, come to my office and he said, I'm very sorry to tell you, but um, you don't have, your pregnancy is not viable. The devil is a liar. I said, what does that mean? He's like, there's no heartbeat. So I started weeping in I front imagine. of the doctor. I wept and I left that doctor's office. And on, I don't know how I drove home. Hmm. But when I got home, I just collapsed on the floor and I wept and I wept until I heard a voice say, stop weeping, stand up and fight for your child. Jesus. And I'd been trying to get my husband on the phone for a while and I think he was operating or something so I couldn't get him. Because it. he's a doctor and yeah. he works in the hospital. So I was on my own. Hmm. Stand up and fight for your child. So I just dried my eyes. And I stood up. I went for anointing oil. I anointed my belly. And in the name of Jesus, I started doing warfare. I was screaming. It was an apartment. Oh, I didn't even care. <laughs> screaming and oh, screaming God. in the name of Jesus. I command you to take your hands off my baby. I, I pray. I speak life to you. I refuse. Oh, you will not God. die. You will live to declare the purposes of the Lord, the praises of the... I mean, I was just... Declaring and fighting till I was just so exhausted, I just collapsed. Hmm. And then and my husband called back and I told him what had happened. He says, don't, don't worry, don't worry about it. Wait, I'll be home soon. So when he got home, he, he and I prayed together. He said, don't worry, we'll get a second opinion. So he called the doctor and asked him, what's going on and what do you tell my wife? And he spoke in medical language and he mm -hmm. said, so I've scheduled her for a DNC to take the thing out. Yeah. And my husband said, hold your horses. You know, <laughs> not too fast. Not too fast. Yeah. Yeah, postpone that. We're going to seek a second opinion. A man of valor. Ooh, that was the Holy Ghost. Wow. That was God. Jesus. And uh, so he, you know, fixed an appointment in a different hospital. In fact, where he worked. And one of his friends was actually the technician, mm -hmm. made me feel so much at home. And just as he put the machine on me, boom, he just, he said, oh, look at it, hello. My God. And immediately I knew that everything was okay. He said, I don't know what that doctor saw, but I see a perfect fetus. My God. I hear a perfect heartbeat. If my husband had allowed that man to perform the DNC, my firstborn won't be here. My God. Yes. That's how the enemy would try to steal the promise. But God gave the victory. Amen. Because Amen. his word, he said it. Yes. He said, I'll give you the victory. And then yes. you had the firstborn. Yes. And then the second child came. Yes. And Surprisingly. You, that's, when the, that's where the second book That's was where wrote. Hotline to Heaven, Hotline to Heaven. Was, was written, yes. Because the devil tried to... Uh, uh, kill my second born. As soon as she was born, she contracted a very fatal uh, virus. virus, which, in fact, she, she, her heart stopped. She stopped breathing. Her heart stopped twice. Wow. And premature baby, four weeks old, they had to shock her back. And uh, she was very, very sick. They didn't think she would make it. They said even if she makes it, she will be mentally retarded. She's one of the most intelligent girls in her class yeah, today. She is. Perfect. You never know. She, is. she went through it. So that was also another journey 
that the Lord took us through, battling the spirit of death, battling still projections of witchcraft on another level, hmm. and seeing his faithfulness through it all. We praise God. And yes. your children are so beautiful. Thank so you. So vibrant. Their personality <laughs> just brightens up the room. <laughs> Sarima you. came home yesterday. She was telling me, she said she saw Amaka, the older one. Yeah, Amele. Amele. Yes. The older one. She said, Mommy, guess what? I saw Auntie's daughter. You know the older one? I said, yeah. She just ran to me and hugged me. I love her. I said, that's Amele for you. <laughs> I remember That's the right. first day I went to your house when yes. you invited us. We went in. Yes. The moment they saw me, it felt like I've known them forever. Yes. Oh, and they walk up. I was like, oh they my God. They love people. They love people. That's yes. what the enemy, they're going to yes. be people. Somebody yes. in life. Yes. You can already yes. tell from mm. the conception. That's right. You know why That's the right. enemy was after that. That's right. That's so right. we thank God for mm. their lives. We thank yes. God for the victory. We thank God for your life. Thank you. And just being an obedient woman of God, thank God Amen. for your husband's life. Yes. Yes. Very Amen. obedient, very quiet. Yes. You know, and you know, God put people together for a reason. Yes. Because if God only know if he hadn't, if you haven't had a man like him, mm. that mm. battle would have been a mm. lost, mm. lost situation. Mm. Because you, as you said, you can't do it on your mm. own. Mm. No. It takes no. two. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. the Bible says one can chase a thousand That's right. and two That's can true. chase two, ten thousand. Yes. So it's yes. a, it's a, it's a marvelous thing what God yes. did for your family. Amen. And I just want you to look into the camera mm. and speak to a woman or a man, a couple mm. that are going through that mm. because not everybody has the grace. That's right. Not every That's couple right. has the grace to go through what you guys went through and succeeded. Right. There are couples right now at the verge of divorce because yes. of no child. Yes. So I want you to speak to that camera and let them know that God is able to do Amen. it. Amen. Um, I'm just speaking out of my heart to you right now. I know exactly what you are going through. And I'm not just speaking to people who are battling with infertility. Anyone that is going through any situation where you are waiting on God for a promise, you might be waiting on God for a husband or for a wife. I just want to encourage you that even though the situation is hopeless, that this God is a faithful God. Mm -hmm. You know, what you are going through is not just about you uh, feeling miserable. Mm -hmm. It's a, an opportunity for you, for God to reveal himself to you. Is an opportunity for God um, to draw you closer to him. So I want you, as I learned in my journey, to not focus on the issue. Eventually, that's what I learned. But to focus on the God that you, are, you serve. The Bible says that looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, look unto him, draw close to him, Build your relationship with him. He will give you the grace. He will give you the faith. He will give you the hope. And he will give you the victory. Faith is powerful. The Bible says that if the, the faith, like a mustard seed, will be able to move mountains. And your faith is what is going to draw God into your situation. Yeah. I pray that no matter what you are going through, that this God who came through for me, Amen. and brought victory on many occasions Amen. will bring that same victory to you that you will also be able to sing Hannah's song at the end of your your journey and be able to testify of God's goodness God bless you <coughs> and we are praying for you in Jesus name now, someone that already conceived their child mm. But the enemy is fighting for the mm. life of that child mm. let's mm. just trust God together and pray sure. for them in agreement yes Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord, to pray and to believe with our brethren out there. Lord, we just want to commit everyone who has heard this testimony yes, Lord. into your hands. Anyone who is going through a similar situation. Yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will send forth angelic help. Yes. Send forth yes, Lord. grace, Lord. Yes, Lord. Impart strength, yes, Lord. dear Holy Spirit. Impart comfort yes, to Lord. their hearts. Encourage them, Lord, yes, Lord. And let them know that, Lord, you are faithful. Yes, Lord. Oh, give them the victory over the enemy. Amen. Give them the victory over every situation that yes, they are going Jesus. through. In the name of Jesus yes, Christ. Lord. Increase their faith, Lord. 
increase their faith, Lord. Help their faith, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For, Lord, your word says that, Lord, without faith, we cannot please you. But that, Lord, you are. We must believe that you are, and you are the one that rewards those who diligently seek you. My God, as they seek for doctor's helps, as, as they seek for counseling, as they seek for all these things, let them seek after you. Ah, let them seek after you. Deepen their relationship with you. Reveal yourself to them as their healer, as their deliverer, as their God who will never leave nor forsake them. And now I pray into your life in the name of Jesus. Anyone that is listening, ah, may the peace of God that passes all understanding, may it guard your heart and your mind. May the storms be calmed in the name of Jesus Christ. May you receive peace Yes, may Lord. you receive hope in the name, in the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. May you one day stand to testify as I am Jesus. testifying today yes, to the glory of the living God. Yes, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so Amen. much, man of God, for Thank being here. You. It's been a pleasure yes. and a blessing. And yes. um, and I know that your testimony, God, we use it to encourage others out there Amen. and just strengthen their faith. Yes. And um, for women that have given up, on God mm -hmm. because of this situation mm -hmm. women that have lost faith yes. in God because of this situation mm. I want you to go back into your prayer closet yes and just go mm -hmm. back and repent ask God yeah because you won't do it on your own mm. it is mm. God that can take you through this journey yeah if he said it he would do it yes and I yes. speak to the husbands mm. who are in this journey with their wives that's right be courageous be strong mm -hmm. Don't let them feel like it's all their fault or it is their problem. It's their battle alone. Mm -hmm. It is the both of you, your battle. That's right. Stand firm in the Lord and be an encouragement to your wife. Mm. Be the man of valor that God has called you to be. And strengthen your women to, to join force together to fight for your children. Amen. Because the enemy sees and knows exactly right. what those seeds are going to be in the future. Yes. So I encourage you to be strong in the Lord. I encourage mm. you to be faithful. Mm. And I encourage you that God will deal with every issue, every generational curse, mm. every witchcraft manipulation mm. that is behind, behind your infertility, Amen. that God will deal with them in Jesus due time. Means. We thank you for watching. This is Ms. Fatike Samora on KPTV Network. Yes. You're watching the Kingdom Promoter Stock Show. I also want to thank Star TV for airing this um, episode. I know that it's going to be a blessing to many. And I thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Kingdom Promoters TV Network and also um, visit our website www.kingdompromoterstvnetwork.com and also you'll find us on Facebook KPTV Network and um, I appreciate you all for your support, your prayers and your word of encouragement. Stay tuned and be blessed. Goodbye.